वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स स्टूडेंट्स इन द प्रीवियस क्लास वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द ऑर्गान्स ऑफ गवर्नमेंट दे आर वी हैड डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द लेजिस्लेटिव ऑर्गन दैट इज इन इंडिया द पार्लियामेंट द लेजिस्लेचर दे आर वी हैड डिस्कस अबाउट द कंपोजिशन ऑफ द पार्लियामेंट देन वी हैड ऑल्सो डिस्कस अबाउट द फंक्शंस ऑफ द पार्लियामेंट स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द नेक्स्ट ऑर्गान ऑफ गवर्नमेंट दैट इज एग्जीक्यूटिव स्टूडेंट्स इन द प्रीवियस एग्जाम्पल वाइल वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द ऑफिस मेमोरेंडम दैट इज द अनाउंसमेंट ऑफ द मेजर पॉलिसी डिसीजन अबाउट द इम्प्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ द मंडल कमीशन रिपोर्ट दे आर वी फाउंड दैट द पर्सन हु साइंड द डॉक्यूमेंट didn't take the decision and he was just executing the policies decision taken by someone else there also we had seen we had found the involvement of the prime minister the role of the prime minister in taking that decision but we also know that the prime minister would not have taken this decision unless he had not got the support from the lok sabha so after getting the support from the lok sabha the prime minister has taken the decision so in that sense he was only executing the wishes of the parliament so you see the parliament took the decision it was implemented or taken by the prime minister it was signed by the officials then it was implemented so at different level of government we find functionaries who take day to day decisions but those decision who were taking do not exercise supreme power on behalf of the people only they took decisions which were taken by the parliament and all those functionaries who are involved in the decision making process collectively known as the executive and about this executive we are going to discuss in today's class why they are called executive because they are in charge of execution of the policies of the government that is the implementation of the policies of the government that is why they were called they are called executive so thus when we talk about the government actually at that time we usually mean the executive this is what related term with government and executive now in a democratic country there are two categories of executive that is one political another one permanent executive so what is political and what is permanent one that is elected by the people for a specific period of time is called the political executive and these executive are elected for a period of fixed period specific period and these are called political executive political leaders who take the decision fall in this categories that is called political executive that is in the second category people are appointed on a long term basis and this is called permanent executive and they are also called as the civil servant because these people who are appointed on a long term basis working in civil service so they are called civil servant and they remain in office even if when the ruling party changes it means political executive may changes but the permanent executive remain in office until the age of their retirement and these officers the permanent executive the officers 
work under the political executive and assist them in carrying out the day-to-day -day administration. So in this way, we are having two types of executive. One is your political, another is your permanent executive. But the question it is, why does the political executive have more power than the non-political executive or permanent executive? The answer to the question is that, as you know, students, in a democracy, the will of the people is supreme. And the minister, who are the part of the political executive, is elected by the people. And on behalf of them, they are empowered to exercise the will of the people. Okay? And that is why they are finally also answerable to the people for all those decisions taken by, the, by them as well as for all the consequences of those decisions also. They are implementing the will of the people. That is why they are answerable to them and they are also facing the consequence of that also. So, the minister takes the advice of experts on technical matters. They only take the advice, but the final decision-making power is there in the hand of the political executive, that is the minister. Actually, in a large organization, those who understand the overall picture take the most important decisions. Those who are there in charge of the overall decisions, overall departments, they are, they are taking the important decision, but not the experts. The experts is there only to tell the route, but someone with a large view decides the destination. The expert is there to show the route only, but the decision-making power is there in the head of the political executive who decides the destination. That is why political executives are more powerful than the non-political executive or permanent executive. They are the experts. They are the helping hand only. Now, who are the part of the political executive? Among them, the most important part of the political executive is the prime minister. In India, it is the prime minister. The prime minister is the most important political institution in the country. And the prime minister is appointed by the president, but the prime minister doesn't have a fixed tenure. He continues in power so long as remains the leader of the majority party or the coalition. Then, after the appointment of the prime minister, the president appoints other minister on the advice of the prime minister. And these are called the council of ministers. And council of minister is the official name of the body that includes all the ministers. And all those the part of the council of ministers are appointed by the president on the advice of the prime minister. And it consists of particularly 60 to 80 ministers. Council of ministers are usually 60 to 80 ministers. Cabinet ministers are usually top level leaders of the ruling party who are in charge of the major ministry. Usually, the cabinet ministers meet to take the decisions in the name of council of ministers. Whatever the decisions are taken, that is taken by the cabinet, but in the name of the council of ministers. That is why cabinet is called the inner ring of the council of ministers. The next part of the council of ministers is minister of state with independent charge. And they are usually in charge of the smaller ministry. And they participate in the cabinet meetings 
only when they are specially invited for that. And the third category of the Council of Minister is Minister of State. And they are attached to assist cabinet ministers. Minister of State are there to help the cabinet ministers in performing all those charge tasks which are being given to them. But this cabinet work as a team. No minister can criticize the decision taken by the cabinet. That is the part of the decision making process of the government. They have to follow the decisions taken by the cabinet. Even if his department or the ministry is not following that also, not in favor of that also, still they cannot criticize the decision of the cabinet. Every minister has secretaries who are civil servants and these secretaries, those who are the part of the civil servants are there to provide necessary input or background information to the minister to take different decisions. Now, powers of the prime minister. As the head of the government, the prime minister had wide ranging power. As you know, prime minister is the head of the government. As a part of it, he has a wide range of powers. What are those? Those powers are, he chairs the cabinet meeting. As the prime minister is the head of the cabinet, he chairs the cabinet meetings. At the same time, he coordinates the work of the different departments. His decisions are final in case of disagreements arise between different departments. In case of any disagreement arises between different departments, the decisions taken by the prime minister is final. He exercises general supervision of different ministry and all the ministers work under his leadership. The prime minister distributes and redistributes portfolios to the different ministers. At the same time, he has the power to reshuffle also the different ministry of different ministers. At the same time, he has the power to dismiss the minister also. He is there to distribute the power as well as has the power to dismiss the minister also. But when the prime minister quits, the entire ministry quits. It means if the prime minister will resign at that time, the entire ministry will resign. That is why the cabinet is the powerful institution in India. Because the prime minister is the head of the cabinet. And if the prime minister will resign, it means the entire ministry will resign. Students, you see the present prime minister of India, Narendra Das Modi. The next part of the political institution is the president. While the prime minister is the head of the government, the president is the head of the state. You have known students, we have discussed in the beginning that we are having a republic system. India is a democratic republic. Here the head of the state and head of the government both are elected by the people. And like that, our prime minister is the head of the government, president is the head of the state. Now, we are going to discuss about the next part of the executive, that is the president. Students, you know, we are having a democratic republic system. What is that republic? In a republic, the head of the state, that is the president, and the head of the government, that is the prime minister, both elected by the people. And in India, the prime minister is the head of the government, and the president is the head of the state. But in our democratic republic system, the head of the state exercises only nominal power. The real head is the 
प्राइम मिनिस्टर एंड प्रेसिडेंट इज द नोमिनल हेड ऑफ द स्टेट द प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया इज लाइक द क्वीन ऑफ ब्रिटेन हुच फंक्शंस आर टू लार्ज एक्सटेंड सेरेमोनियल ही इज दे आर टू साइन द बिल ओनली सिग्नेचरियल ऑथोरिटी ओनली दैट इज वाई ही वॉज कॉल्ड ही इज कॉल्ड एज द नोमिनल हेड ऑफ द स्टेट नाउ हाउ द प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया इज इलेक्टेड वॉट आर द प्रोसीजर्स दे आर टू इलेक्ट द प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया द प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया इज इलेक्टेड बाय एन इलेक्टोरल कॉलेज कंसिस्ट ऑफ द मेंबर ऑफ द पार्लियामेंट इलेक्टेड मेंबर ऑफ द पार्लियामेंट एंड द इलेक्टेड मेंबर ऑफ द स्टेट लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबलीज एंड ए कैंडिडेट स्टैंडिंग फॉर द प्रेसिडेंट्स पोस्ट हैज टू गेट ए मेजोरिटी ऑफ वोट टू विन द इलेक्शन आफ्टर गेटिंग द मेजोरिटी ही इज डिक्लेयर्ड एज द प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया यू सी स्टूडेंट्स द इमेज ऑफ द प्रेजेंट प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया रामनाथ कोविंद इज द प्रेजेंट प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया नाउ एज यू नो द प्रेसिडेंट इज द नोमिनल हेड ऑफ द स्टेट स्टील ही एंजॉय सम पावर्स द पावर ऑफ द प्रेसिडेंट एज यू नो स्टूडेंट्स द प्रेसिडेंट इज द नोमिनल हेड ऑफ द कंट्री हेड ऑफ द स्टेट बट दो ही इज द नोमिनल हेड ऑफ द स्टेट स्टील ही एंजॉय सम पावर्स वॉट आर दोज ऑल गवर्नमेंट एक्टिविटीज टेक प्लेस इन द नेम ऑफ द प्रेसिडेंट लाइक दैट ऑल लॉज एंड मेजर पॉलिसी डिसीजन्स ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट आर इशूड इन हीज और हार नेम लाइक दैट ऑल मेजर अपॉइंटमेंट्स आर मेड इन द नेम ऑफ द प्रेसिडेंट सो फ्रॉम दिस जस्ट यू सी स्टूडेंट्स ऑल द एक्टिविटीज विच आर दे आर द पार्ट ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट आर टेकन इन द नेम ऑफ द प्रेसिडेंट other power of the presidents are he has the power to appoint the chief justices of india the judges of the supreme court and high courts of the states the election commissioner of india ambassadors to other countries like that the chief of the armed forces are also appointed by the president of india thereafter all the international treaties and agreements which are made by the government made in the name of the president at the same time the president is the supreme commander of the armed forces of india and also he exercises emergency power in case of emergency president is having an enormous power and it is the power of the president to declare emergency generally we have three types of emergency national emergency state emergency and financial emergency and it is declared by the president of india but though he has some powers still he has some limitation also what are the limitation president is the head of the state but not the head of the government that is why he exercises only nominal power and those power also on the advice of the council of ministers headed by the prime ministers second point the president can ask the council of minister to reconsider its advice whatever the advices are given to the president by the council of minister only the president has the power to ask the council of minister to reconsider but if the same advice is given again he is or she is bound to act on it it means he doesn't have any extra power he is there to act according to the advice of the council of minister headed by the prime minister that is why it has been told that the president dance according to the tunes of the prime minister or the council of minister thereafter a bill passed by the parliament 
becomes a law only after the president gives assent to it. After the signature of the president, the bill becomes law. But if the president wants, he or she can delay the bill or sometime send the bill to the parliament for reconsideration. But if the bill again passes by the parliament with the same condition and again goes to the president for its signature, at that time the president is bound to sign it. The parliament may accept the suggestion of the prime president, may not. If it comes to the president again, he is there to sign it and it is compulsory on his part to sign it. Thereafter, the next and the most important organ of the government is your judiciary. All the courts at different levels in the country are called the judiciary. Different courts are there at different level, center level, state level, local level. So all the courts at different levels in the country are collectively called as the judiciary. And the judiciary system in India is independent and powerful institution. And it is also essential for a democracy also. Judiciary must be independent and powerful. It is the most important part of the democratic system. So, the Indian judiciary consists of the Supreme Court of India for the entire nation, then the high courts in the states and district courts or the courts at the local level. So, in this way, our Indian judiciary consists of. The judiciary in India is also one of the most powerful judiciary in the world. If you will see the judicial system in the entire world, our Indian judiciary system is most powerful judiciary. You see, the image of the Supreme Court of India, the highest judicial body in India. It is the top of the hierarchy. At the top, Supreme Court is there. In the middle, high courts are there. At the bottom, subordinate courts are there. And Supreme Court is the top of the judicial hierarchy in India. Whatever the decisions is given by the Supreme Court, it is final and it is abided by all. Now, how the judges are appointed and what are the procedures to remove the judges of the Supreme Court and High Courts in India? The judges of the Supreme Court and the High Courts are appointed by the President but on the advice of the Prime Minister and in consultation with the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of India. First of all, the President appoints the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of India on the advice of the Council of Ministers headed by the Prime Minister. After that, other judges are appointed by the President on the advice of the Prime Minister, but on the consultation of the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of India. And once a person is appointed as the judges of the Supreme Court or the High Court, it is next to impossible to remove him from that position. It is very difficult in Indian judicial system, it is very difficult to remove the judges of the Supreme Court or High Court once they are appointed. But still, they can be removed from the office. How? A judge can be removed from the office only through a procedure that is called impeachment procedure. Passed separately by two-thirds member of the two houses of the parliament, which is very difficult. The motion, the impeachment motion must be passed separately by the both the houses of the parliament, Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha, with two-thirds of its member present in voting. Once it is passed, then and there only 
he can be impeached through the procedure called impeachment procedure and it has never happened in the history of indian democracy up to this period no judges of the supreme court or high court has been revoked in the history of indian democracy now what are the power of the judiciary students you know indians judiciary system is an impartial and integrated one it means the supreme court controls the judicial administration in the country it is the at the top of the hierarchy and all the judiciary system in india is controlled by the supreme court then what are the functions powers basically the powers and function of the judiciary is called the jurisdiction of the supreme court or high courts by name it is called jurisdiction so what are those first one it settle disputes in which cases it settle dispute whenever it is arises between the citizens first between the citizen second between citizens and the government in case of disputes between the citizens first next between citizens and government and between two or more states when two or more states also fighting at that time also the decision is taken by the supreme court and the last and most important one it also settle the disputes between the government and the union and the states if there is any disputes arises between the union government and the cent cent state government union government means central government and state government at the time the di disputes is solved by the supreme court of india the next most important function is free from legislature and judiciary the supreme court of india and the high courts you can say the judges do not act on the direction of the government or according to the wishes of the party in power whichever party may be in the power the judges act according to their conscience and according to the prevailing or existing rules and regulations of the country that is the constitution it doesn't act according to the party in power that is why all the modern democracies have courts that are independent of the legislature and executive next important power it interpret the constitution of the country the supreme court and the high court have the power to interpret the constitution of the country it is there in the hand of the supreme court and high courts only the next most important power is judicial review the supreme court and high courts can declare any law of the legislature or any action of the executive whether at the union or at the state level if they find such a law or action is against the constitution any law which is passed by the legislature or any action made by the executive body may be at the state level or at the central level it is declared as invalid by the supreme court the constitutional validity of any legislation or action of the government in the country when it is challenged before them it is the power of the supreme court and high court to review the decisions taken by the legislature or by the executive body this is what is known as judicial review and according to this if the court find that a law or an order of the executive 
disobey the provisions of the constitution whatever the law made by the legislature or the action taken by the executive is against the provision of the constitution it declared such law or order as null and void it means it is disqualified so at the same time the supreme court of india also act as the guardian of the fundamental rights of the citizen if the fundamental rights of the citizen are violated anyone can move to the supreme court or high court directly it is the power of the president sorry power of the supreme court or the high court to protect the fundamental rights of the citizen thereafter anyone can approach the court if public interest is hurt by the action of the government if any action of the government is against the public interest for that anyone can appeal to the supreme court or high court this is what called public interest litigation this is a device introduced by the supreme court to hear the disputes or any cases that violates the fundamental rights as well as the public interest the most important is the public interest anyone can appeal to the supreme court or high court that is called public interest litigation at the same time the court has the power to intervene to prevent the misuse of the government's power to make decision generally the government has the power to take decision but in case of misuse of power the supreme court or high court has the power to intervene into the matter they can check the mal practices on the part of the public officials so with this students we have completed this chapter and in this chapter we have discussed about the the three most important organs of the government that is your legislature executive and judiciary now i am going to ask you some questions regarding today's discussions whatever discussion we have made about the executive body and the judicial body the first question is who appoints the prime minister of india who appoints the prime minister of india the answer to the question is the prime minister of india is appointed by the president the next most important question is what is impeachment the question is what is impeachment the answer to the question is it is a procedure through which judges of the supreme court or the high courts are removed the procedure to remove the judges of the supreme court or high courts that procedure is called impeachment procedure the last question for you in whose name are all the international treaties and agreements are made in whose name or are all the international treaties and agreements are made the answer is all the international treaties and agreements are made in the name of the president all the international treaties and agreements are made in the name of the president students with this today we have completed this chapter that is the working of institutions and in this chapter we discussed how different organs of the government works in a democratic system with this this chapter came to an end i hope you must have enjoyed a lot thank you